Hi guys, today I am making meatloaf and I'm going to also be using my clever cutter to cut an onion. I've never used it to cut an onion before. Uh, the ingredients you need for this are a pound and a half to two pounds of lean ground beef, one box of stove top stuffing mix chicken flavored, um, one cup of water, two egg whites, and about three quarters to a uh, one cup of ketchup. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to preheat your oven to 375 and then we will cook the onions to make them a little soft first. So I feel a little weird not cutting the ends off with a knife but let's just get right to it. I'm going to bring the camera closer so you can get a close-up view of how the Clever Cutter works on onions. Okay, so I'm going to cut the end off. Oop. I might have to cut the ends off with a, with a regular knife. Yeah, I'm actually going to have to use a regular knife because my clever cutter is not clever cutting the end. So, I'm just going to do like I normally do with an onion. Take this part off. Now you can use a white onion or a yellow onion for this. It doesn't really matter. This onion is a little stubborn. I'll just take off the outermost layer. That should grab all of the skin with it. All right, let's get clever cutting. Okay, so now obviously this is not going to like chop into little pieces, but well at least, and it goes all the way around the onion, which is nice. Then you know what? I'm going to see if I can chop it into little pieces. I'll take that out in a minute. So let's see. Huh. Oh, look at that. I didn't know I was going to be able to do that. That's pretty nifty go lifty. I definitely, I definitely think it works for onions a lot better than I thought it was going to. I still think that it might be easier to just do onions with the um, traditional, I'm going to start my oil to cook. Um, it might still be easier to use the knife, but I mean it's nice to know you can clever cut your onions. Yeah, so far everything that I've made with the clever cutter, or not made, chopped with the clever cutter has worked. So um, I'm doing a scalloped potatoes in the crock pot video and it worked for the potatoes, it's worked for um, carrots, what I might try to do next is I might try to make just an entire veggie soup with the Clever Cutter so everybody can see how one vegetable after the other after the other works. So, so yeah, I'm impressed as usual with the Clever Cutter. All right, I'm going to finish chopping these onions and I will get back to you when I am done sauteing them down a little bit to soften them um, 
to give you the rest of the um, meatloaf recipe. Okay, so my onions have cooked and they are cooling a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my beef mixture. I've left it out for about 10 minutes, maybe 15. Add my stuffing. And I just usually get in right with my hand. I'm mix it up a little bit before I add the water and the egg whites and the onions. So again that's about two pounds of ground beef. One package of chicken flavored stove top stuffing. Uh, one cup of water. There are the two egg whites. Careful, bud. And then I'm going to also add about half the onions now. I'll mix it and then I'll add half the onions in just a minute. So, I always used to make this with just breadcrumbs. Italian breadcrumbs, regular breadcrumbs, Parmesan cheese, Worcestershire. It never ever tasted to me like anything except for like beef. Like it didn't taste like a meatloaf. Like my mother-in-law makes amazing meatloaf. And I just never felt that mine tasted like meatloaf. Um, so when I found this recipe, um, I really liked that the stove top kind of added some flavoring. And I don't normally like onions. So I like that this one um, oops, on the um, I like this one, the onions are softened, and now you can add a little bit of ketchup into the mix, however, to be honest, I am a little bit low on ketchup, and I really, really like the taste of the ketchup on the top after it cooks, so I'm going to use a majority of my ketchup um, on there, but you can add some ketchup into um, into the mix is what I usually do. I usually about a quarter to a half a cup and mix it in. So this is all really, really well mixed. And as usual, I apologize for my cutting board. The rental. Okay. So I'm going to take my meat and I'm going to make a loaf. Now, I, I would be curious to people who watch this. Normally what I do is about halfway through cooking, I'll take it out and I'll kind of scoop all the fat out and like some of the grease. What do you guys do with all of the fat and the grease that comes off of your guys' meatloaf? Um, I don't know if there's a better way. I don't know if I should get one of those like racks. I don't know if there's even any that would fit in here, but... So this is what this looks like. Wash my hands real quick. Alright. Well, my hands are washed. Be very be careful, bud. Jackson, be careful. Good. Good listening. And then now I usually use more ketchup. And I'm probably going to ask my husband to pick some up on his way home. And I will add some more in a little bit. So yeah, I just coat with ketchup on the top. And like I said, I really like the texture and the taste as it bakes. And it kind of, not hardens, but I think you know what I mean. Um, and it's just really, really tasty. So I can wipe my finger easier than I can wipe a spoon. So I'm just going to spread it with my finger. And my scalloped potatoes are in the crock pot. There'll be two separate videos, but wow. I'm so excited to eat this. So this is going to go into the oven 
for 55 minutes to an hour. Um, and like I said, I'll check at the halfway point for, you know, fat and grease and stuff. Um, and then I will show you if there is any fat and grease at my halfway point. Okay, and this is what it looks like done. I personally like my meatloaf more well done. <laughs> I know, it's kind of odd. I like it a little bit crispier on the outside. So I usually cook mine a little bit longer. I cook this about an hour and ten minutes. But uh, you should be good if you like a more moist on the outside. Um, you should be good with about 50 to 55 minutes. So I always like to cut the thickest part just to make sure it's all the way done. And it is. It looks delicious. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you have any questions, comments, please go ahead and leave it down below. If you decide to try it, I'd love to hear about it. And I will talk to you for my next video. Bye.